Welcome back everyone. This week we're going to be checking out Tavern of the Spear. My computer is so afraid of all these things I download. What does it know that I don't? It don't know shit. Let's be honest. It has no idea what it's talking about. So this is listed as being an adult, gay, furry visual novel. Actually, I don't know if it's a visual, visual novel at all, actually, but uh, definitely isn't Renpy, at least. Uh, that's inspired by Fallout, which is not what you expect to hear. So we'll see how that goes. There's difficulties. Easier mode. And normal mode. So on easy mode they have half health and on normal mode they have higher loot. The default name is Avend. Ivend. Probably Ivend. Wait. Uh is there supposed to be a prompt for this one? I'm scared. Choose your stats. It will determine what you can and can't do in the game. It'll be helpful if you want to watch CGs. Tab will let you skip the dialogue if you've read it before. Okay. Oh, jeez. Uh, I mean, I usually make charisma builds, but in this case, it feels even more apt, depending on what we're going for genre-wise. And I mean, like, if you have a high charisma, you're gonna need a high endurance. That's just... That's just math. Those just come in hand... come hand in hand. Uh... Sure. It's not the first time I've built a character this this month. Increased flirt points in battle, you say? Your name is Ivand. It's been one whole year since you left the village on your adventure. This is the tradition of the Lost Spear Tribe. For every male at the age of 23, which is how old you should be if you're watching this video, or at least 18, because this is an adult video for adults. You wonder how everyone back home is doing, especially your father. How you wish something extraordinary would happen. Making the end of your journey. Marking the end of your journey so you can return home to your people. Some days later. Your ears perk up at the sound of dark clouds rolling overhead. To your back you can see the approaching wall of rain. A frown forms on your face, and you try to outrun the roaring footsteps of rain falling. You're quickly drenched in water. There's not a single place to take shelter. Faint shadows of trees and shrubs fall into view as you march on forward uh, through the muddy road. Every step feels heavier and harder to make as the mud grips into your feet. Am I even on the road? The bath ahead is a gray blur as the rain keeps pouring heavily. You keep going until you notice a warm yellow glow coming from the side of the path. It's glow. It feels so familiar. Hey! Hey, get up! Huh? Where? What? That voice is so familiar. It's just the back of your head, the name of that voice. Your head feels heavy, as though someone hits you with, with a rock. It takes a while for your vision to come into focus. Turning your head to the left, your snout bumps hard against the leg of a bar stool. Buddy boy, get your ass off the floor. You want to sleep here, it's going to cost you. Okay, okay, just give me a sec. You see a burly gray wolf with a mug in one hand and a hook for his other hand. Two white braids formed from his beard run down all the way to the middle of his pecs. His blue eyes are almost glowing as he looks at you. 
eyes? Does he have two eyes? Wait, father? I can't believe what I'm seeing. My father. Snow, he's right in front of me. There's a peal of laughter in the pub. Wow, Snow, the boy called you dad. Old Snow. I didn't even know you had a child. Father. Boy, that fall must have knocked your brains out. I've never seen you in my entire life. If you're trying to joke around, this isn't funny, Father. What are you doing here? I'm not your father. The name's Snow. I'm the bartender and owner of this establishment. Either you order something or I'm throwing you back out into the woods. Yeah, I know you're Snow. Father, Papa, what are you talking about being a bartender? Enough of this father crap. I've literally just seen you today. If you're the type to go around calling any random stranger your father, you have issues, boy. Daddy issues. Because he does have two eyes, but they're not, they're not both blue. At least not anymore. The person in front of you looks and sounds like your father. The person in front of- bleh. The person in front of you lo both looks and sounds like your father. He doesn't seem to be lying. What do you want to do? What do you- It's- I mean- I don't even- How do you even end up in that situation? <laughs> where you're mistaking someone for being your father? Uh, play along? I'm sorry, I must have confused you with someone I know. Someone? Yeah, walking back who the someone could be now? No problem, stranger. Can I get you a drink? Or maybe you're looking for a place to stay? Where is here, actually? I can't remember much except for a... A yellow light. Most of the travelers that come here say the same thing. Well... This is the Tavern of Spear. It just caught up with the fact it says Tavern of Spear, not Tavern of the Spear. That feels slightly weird. We provide meals and a warm bed for any who can afford it. You search your belt for your coin pouch, but turn up empty. I could have sworn I came here with money, but it's missing. No surprise. You came staggering in like an undead. I was considering having Hakon and Whiter over there toss you back out if you so much as scratch the floorboards. Snow points to the people behind you. A green muscular alligator in a loincloth serves a grumpy looking red dragon a beer of mug. A mug of beer. <laughs> you notice the leather shoulder pads the dragon. You notice that the leather, I'm just choking a little bit today apparently. You notice that the leather shoulder pad the dragon wears are covered in deep scratches. The dragon eyes you menacingly from the corner of his eye. You try to avoid his gaze and turn back, only to nearly bump into Snow's face. He inches closer and whispers into your ear. Don't worry, he's much nicer once you get to know him. Anyway... The bartender pulls himself back and points at you. I have a proposition. Since you're short on coins, I have a small job you can take. A job? Hmm. I am kind of hungry. What do you need? The monster around the forest have been moving closer to the tavern than I prefer. Hakan's been out of action since his last encounter with them. So I need you to kill a few of them. To kill a few of these creatures for the rest of them. Uh, so the rest of them will understand to stay away. I'll pay you some coin for your help. Sounds simple enough. Alright, I'll take the job. Good on you, stranger. Once you're done, then we can have a proper introduction. And get you settled for the next few days. Next few days? No seems pretty confident that you'll be here for a while. What is he not telling? Best to come back later to find out. It's difficult to see outside the tavern. Everything is blanketed by gray fog. The only source of light is the moon and the glow of the tavern. Your ears pick up the sound of twigs breaking. Something is moving in front of you. Who's there? 
No answer. You draw your sword an inch closer and closer towards the forest. The air is suddenly silent, but you can feel a pressure looking at you. Something bursts out of the trees. Oh, hello. A hooking black figure with a skull for a head. It roars at you. Which is confusing, because well, there's got to be some missing organs here, right? The monster raises its massive hand and slams it hard to the ground. You manage to jump back in time to and ready to a fighting stance. It does not look happy that it missed. Here it comes. Combat. Submit. <laughs> Just immediately. Skill. We got bind up. I don't think my the controller works here. Oh no, there's a lust meter. Bind up. Oh, that's healing. You, you bind your wounds, not tie up the monster. You draw your sword and lunge in for the attack. Holy shit, it has 400 health. I don't. The monster hits you. Alright, so I do 11 per hit. The monster hits you, but you have neutralized the damage this attack has done to you through your own dexterous flexibility. I am in... This is not looking great. Does submit do what I think it does? I can't fight anymore. The enemy's too strong. You're knocked to the ground. He's too strong. What is this power? A figure rushes past you. It's snow. He wields a sword like yours and jumps at the monster. His strike lands and cuts the demon across the chest. The skull demon buckles and stumbles backwards. It roars and flees into the forest. Come on, kid. It's over. Still not sure what I'm supposed to do with the idea that you think that this is your father. It's weird. The monster has never been so close to the tavern. Anything broken? No, thanks, fa Snow. I'm sorry I kind of put your life at risk there. Wasn't expecting such a powerful enemy to appear. Anyway, here's your reward. 200 coins. Now, you're just in luck. You have enough to rent a room for the night. That'll be more than enough. The weather was mostly foggy. I should be gone by, it should be gone by tomorrow. The snow bangs the table with his good, uh, snow bangs the, the I reflect if you want to call him the snow, so that's a problem. <laughs> Snow bangs the table with his good hand and laughs loudly. You sense the eyes of the others in the tavern falling on your shoulder. That's hilarious. You really think you can leave the forest by tomorrow? Boy, that fog is no ordinary fog. What do you mean? Snow points to the bar stool and you take a seat. Your left leg twitches and you wonder what bad news your father's doppelganger is about to say. He pulls out a mug and starts to clean it with a clean rag attached to his hook hand. A lot of same sense, same word repeating the same sentence lines, which is rough. Like the guy eyeing me with his eye. The fog is like a living being. It decides on, it decides on its own when to open up the exit out of the forest. Sometimes it may be a few days, a few weeks, or a few months. There's no telling when, really. That's insane. Even if it were true, why can't you just cut to the trees? Eventually you reach the main road. You think nobody's ever tried that? The last person to try it went hacking for four days and ended up back here as, a, as the hired muscle. He motions to the person he was talking about with a wave of a snout. You see, he means Hakan. Now pass out on the table with a half a dozen mugs at his table. There it is again. <laughs> This can't be. I can't be here for months. I have people waiting for me back home. Also, like, how do you survive when the place closes for months? Do you, how do you get supplies? You have, you're running a tavern, but like, you expect people to pay, but how does that work once you just dry up the entire economy by having successfully claimed everyone's wealth because they can't leave and they have to keep paying you? How do you make money then? Where do, where, where do you spend money? 
I don't know what else to tell you, boy, other than just help around here. Keep yourself well fed and comfortable, then go home when the fog clears. You were way too calm about this. How are you not freaking out more about this? More importantly, why are you still here? Snow smiles at you, but it feels like he isn't looking at you, but more through you. As long as there are lost or abandoned souls, the tavern and I will always be here to keep them company. That doesn't answer anything. Your statement falls on deaf ears. Snow pulls aside the mug and pulls a key from below the counter. Ugh. Maybe I'm getting too tired to make any sense. I don't have the vigor of young wolves like you do. Here, your room is in the third door on the right. He places the key in front of you. If you feel hungry, well, too bad. Kitchen's closed for the day. And wider? Wider. Get your scaly ass over here. You see the green alligator from before is sitting on his own with a piece of paper and pencil near the door. There he is. He puts down his belongings and makes his way towards the counter. This here is Wider, the tavern's waiter. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious that his name is that close to Waiter. Also, I guess Christianity exists in the setting. Hi. Nice to meet a new face. The alligator smiles warmly and reaches out for your hand to shake it. His muscles were not just for show. You can feel his strong grip on the palm of your hand. Nice to meet you. I'm Aelin. Avend. Avend. That's what I landed on, wasn't it? If you need to order anything, you go through him. And if you have any more questions to ask about the place, you can consult him too. Too much talking is exhausting. I'd rather do things with my hands. Wider continues to shake your hand until you let go first. He blushes as he seems to notice what he was doing. While Snow leaves the counter, Wider bends closer. His face is inches away from yours. Just knock on my door if you need anything else. He walks away from you, but your eyes trail onto him, transfixed by the motions of his hips and supple bottom. <laughs> Welp, gay confirmed. Wider disappears into the top of the stairs as you decide to follow suit. Akon is still knocked out on his table. You consider waking him, but his loud snore tells you to just leave him be. There's also just like someone you've never met, basically, so just it's a strange interaction to go for. Best to retire for the night. Hmm? Little noise in the background? Did I imagine that? It's a new day, maybe. There's no real indication of time around this tavern. No clocks, no sundials, nothing. You're not even sure how long you've been asleep. Every inch of your body feels glued to the bed. I wasn't expecting electricity. This is like a very modern looking room that has electricity with like, there's like three lamps in a little cluster there. I can't quite tell if I'm seeing an air conditioning unit or not. Huh. <laughs> That's definitely a light switch. Blinking at the ceiling a few times, you roll about trying to fall asleep again, but to no avail. You get up and get dressed before heading down to the bar. As you walk down the stairs, you notice that Snow is not behind the counter. Hakan's sitting at the same table as last night, but he's having a hearty breakfast of eggs. You walk over to Wider, standing next to a hyena sitting underneath the stairs. Morning, handsome. Morning, Wider. Where's Snow? He's out doing the weekly ingredient hunt. So, I'm in charge of the tavern until he comes back. The smell of scrambled eggs wafting in the air stirs up your stomach. It growls loudly. I'm hungrier than I expected. 
Well, you're just in luck. What will you have? The meat the meal nourishes you with energy to go about your day. Oh, we don't get this we don't get a description of it. Hello. What if I click on my head? Those are my stats. Including a lust stat? What's core? I don't know. Inventory. Let's see. Dangerous item to remove. <laughs> Bone material. Okay. Hi there. What can I do for you? Talk? About him? I, uh, never got a chance to talk to you last night. Ah, you're cute, but I'm on the clock. The old man will not be happy if he catches me chatting up the customers. Maybe next time, handsome. Hey, I'm running out of coins again. I'm wondering if there's any work I can do around here that I can, so I can keep the room? Well, I don't have any work for you at the moment. However, the old man told me Chet has an important job for you to take. And needs you to deal with it as soon as possible before you do anything else. Chet's always on the lookout for someone to tell him to get his own personal goods. And he has the coin to pay for it. So you can always ask him for other work too. Huh. Okay, I'll check him out. Who is Chet? What does he look like? Where is he? These are important steps in this process. Is that my room? Yep. This is your room. Whenever you rest in your bed, you can spend the experience points you gain to level up. You can use five points to increase one stat. You have zero. Loser. Who's the hyena? You take a seat in front of the spandrel. Oh, look at him. Why are you so <laughs> suspicious looking down here? Welcome, welcome. I've been wondering when you'd come over to talk to me. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I don't get that many customers around here. Maybe my location isn't that good. He sounds cheery and excited to meet you. His brown, bushy tail taps loudly against the floor. My name's Ivan. Chet. So, what do you need, buddy? You look like a rope kind of guy. Every good adventurer needs a rope. He pulls out a, a coarse rope from his back and attempts to tie it into a knot. Good for catching your prey in the forest and in bed. Chet punctuates the word bed by strongly tugging at both ends of the rope letting you hear the fibers of rope tighten. Uh, yeah, uh, I actually came to talk about something else. Wider said you might have a job for me to do? I do, but I don't think you're up for it. What? Why? Well, these items I need are not only heavy, they're very delicate. They have a tendency to pop if enough pressure is applied. Chet rummages through his bag and pulls out what looks like a ball of slime. He holds it close to your face. A strong minty scent emanates from the ball. This here is a slime jewel. It's like a kind of adhesive that's handy for fixing anything here. I can personally recommend it as a substitute for lube, too. <laughs> Wait, what? Chet doesn't seem to hear you and carries on talking. They are pretty sensitive during the first hour they're extracted from the slime monsters, so they risk popping and turning into nothing. If you're up for the job, bring two of them back to me. You can find slimes that carry these things in the, fo in the forest to the west of the tavern. They only come out during the day because they rely on heat to maintain movement. I can handle that. Then all the best for you. If you come back bruised and battered, I'd be happy to rub some healing cream all over you. Chet winks at you before turning his attention back to rearranging his items on display. Watch? 
Now then, my big, tall, and handsome customer, I've got something for you. What is it? Well, you know how we're all stuck here with all the time in the world, right? Yeah, I'm not even sure if time is even moving around here. Yep. Which makes work kind of hard because you don't really know how long you've done something. Which would be great if you were in bed, catch my drift. M maybe? Anyways, I have this special watch I made for everyone in the tavern. It may not accurately depict the time of the outside world, but we all agreed on what time it should be so we can keep track of things. I highly recommend you get it, honey. I've sold this to a whole lot of people. Unless you want to be lost in time as well. It's only a hundred coins. I have it on display with the rest of my items. Pleasure doing business with you. You get the pocket watch. Now you keep track of time. About the fog? So how's the fog? Thick. Like me. He raises arm, his right arm and flexes. Right, and how did you know that from down here? Well, it's no challenge if you know which hole to peek through and who to prod, in any case. I overheard Snow talking to Wider about the fog before he left. Damn it, then I can't leave yet. Oh, cheer up. You can pass the time with one of my toys here, like this stone. He pulls out a phallic-shaped great stone, rubbing it in a suggestive manner. Uh, maybe later. This guy's relentless. This is what every single topic goes to. About the work? Uh, I think we're good there. Alright, so we need to go catch a slime for the horny hyena. Also, this guy's here. Oh, the time's up here now. You approach a grumpy-looking dragon sitting across his, his unconscious, unconscious friend. His table reeks of alcohol. You feel like someone punched you in the nose with a bottle of beer. Hi, I'm Ivan. Uh, buzz off. The fur behind your back stands erect. That was the opposite effect you expected. Sorry if I'm being rude. Unless you're a mug of beer, you can buzz off. It looks like if I want to talk to him, I need to buy to get a beer first. All right. Well, we don't need this guy. We're off to have a questionable experience with slimes. Uh, out in the woods, probably? There, maybe? The exit's still foggy, I can't leave now. Oh, that's the exit. You explored the forest. There's no path to lead you anywhere, so you push through with your hunter's instincts. As you traverse through the woods, you hear something bouncing and the sound of something wet landing on the ground. Probably a slime. Nope, I found a sturdy stick. I got a stick. I got a stick. You follow your nose, led by the scent of some creature deep in the forest. Pushing through branches and shrub, you hear something rustling nearby. A slime lunges at you. Hi? Your slime is easy to kill. Oh, well, this is like the reverse of the previous fight. This thing hits me with full force and it does like four damage. The slime crumpled on the floor. You pick up some glue. And a slime jewel. There's another one. I have received minimal damage. And two slime jewels. So that's probably what I needed, right? What happens if you hit submit? I can't fight anymore. The enemy is too strong. They've knocked you to the ground. Your weapon is too far away for you to reach. There's a strong aura coming from the approaching enemy slime. Digging deep into the dirt, you try to pull yourself away from the slime, but your body is too battered to, pu to pull you far. Oh, oh no! What are we going to do? Oh, I immediately can't show anything. <laughs> Do do do. Anyway, uh, slime's getting right up in there. Yup, yup. Look at it go. Uh huh. Oh, 
it's very excited. Look at it go. It's the horniest slime in the world. <laughs> Yep, that's about what you'd expect. Why did he black out? No, I lost money. The, the fucking slime steals money from you. Why would it even know to do that? Anyway, that went about as you'd expect. Uh, that's the tavern, right? What's this? Some other building that seemingly has no one in it. Utility room. It smells like grain inside. You made it back. I know those monsters didn't stand a chance against you. 200 experience. 100 coins. I might have some other odd jobs in the future. If you ever need some coin, just come by. I'll even sweeten the deal. With each successful quest, I can tell you some interesting things. What kind? People, monsters, this tavern, maybe even sex positions. <laughs> every fucking thing he says, every time, there's like no subtlety, and it's not even like leading to it. It's just, he's just relentless. Chet winks at you again. If I didn't know any better, I think you're trying to seduce me. Ivan, Bud, am I? Ask him if he wants to have sex. <laughs> I have my own room and a big enough bed for the two of us. Ah, you're sweet. It takes more than a wolf and a and a hot bod to get me going. That's factually not true, judging by everything that's happened so far. What will it take? What you, we have to earn it now? After how forward he's been? What the fuck is this? Where's the fun in that if I tell you? You go find it for yourself. Anyway, since you helped me with this job, here's something you should know. The al that alligator's pretty discreet. Try leaving him a tip of 210 coins. He might open up to you more. Okay? Is there anything else you need? Sell monster material? Those are sticks. Sell value of zero. That is, in fact, not monster material. Wasn't I given 200 coins earlier and then I was just rewarded 100 just now? And I spent 100 on the watch? I think that means I lost 100 to the slime that got me? Well, I figure you want to find want some extra firepower. I start. I was skipping through it because it seemed like generic. Buy something dialogue. Usually, I keep these in stock for wider, but you might find some use for them. Let me just get them. The hyena turns around to face his backpack. He moons you as he digs for the, this item of his. His ample behind swaying from side to side, so juicy and thick. You swear he's taking so long on purpose. Yeah. Obviously. He's clearly fucking with you all the time. You gulp when his pants start to fall off, slowly revealing this crack. Wait. His pants are on? That's not- people don't call that mooning when the pants are on. That's not what that means. Ta-da! Booze? Not quite. This is a fire and firebomb. The special concoction made from the strongest alcohol the tavern has, and other materials to make sure it burns well. That does sound handy. What inspired you to make such a nifty weapon? Wild is the only one who uses them, but he first when he first arrived he was worried the monsters would badly hurt him. He said it would be bad for his job if his assets, emphasis on the ass, was bruised. Snow also figured it would be helpful to for future guests to have a way to protect themselves. I get where Wider's coming from. That and he likes to have a photo finish pose whenever he defeats a foe. Huh? 
Yeah, I once saw him get a couple of explosives near the nest of slimes. He faced away from the nest, tossed the firebomb without looking at it, made one heck of a background shot. Now, I want to warn you though, if you have uh, one of these, keep them away from Hakan. There's a few thoughts where I'm like, do you really want to be throwing firebombs in a forest that you're trapped in? This seems like it can go bad quickly, but also... Did you say photo finish? Do you guys have photography? Huh? Why? Because we'll drink it? You laugh, but Chet's expression remains stoic. Oh. Yeah, the alcohol I use for us is high grade. He's always after him. Oh yeah, one more thing. Wider mentioned along the way he encountered some slimes that could not be defeated by the firebomb. Instead, they changed forms. I personally never saw that happen, so I'm skeptical about the whole thing. Why would you say so? Because I tried to, it myself, too. But these slimes were so weak, they simply couldn't survive my flame bomb at all. My balls are perfect. <laughs> Is that even related to the previous line? It means the bombs? <laughs> what a line. Chet picks up a bomb in each hand, turns his head sideways, and weighs it repeatedly in front of you. Anyway, how many firebombs can I set you for? I'll buy one at least. Actually, can only afford... They sell the minerals of 1, 3, and 5, and I can't afford more than one then. But they just indicated that I should just give it to this guy, because you've got to get him to like me. This guy's still passed out. I don't think I can wake him. I didn't even notice that that character was there the first time. He was mentioned in the dialogue, though. I need to get a drink first. Wait, the, you can't use a firebomb as a drink? I thought they were teasing that. That keep him away from that guy, he always tries to drink him. I'm like, okay, well, I want him to like me by getting a drink for him, so... Seems like that's the solution to the problem. Five LV points. I have zero LV points. Okay, so that's separate from the experience. Hey, kid. Come here for a second. Uh, yeah. What do you need, Snow? The older wolf is massaging his forehead without looking at you. With other hand, he's tapping loudly on the surface of the bar. You've seen this action before. Your father often does this when he is upset. Look, you remember the monsters from today? Yeah? Why? What did you think about it? They look tasty. <laughs> It looked like it had a lot of meat on its bone. I wonder how, how, how it would have tasted. Do you think the skull demon meat would cook better grilled or boiled? It doesn't matter how you cook it. What matters is how you season it. And that's not the point. We're getting off track. There was something weird going on when I went to get up to gather supplies. I was attacked by a trio of slimes. The thing is, the slimes weren't fighting in their usual pattern. Usually they came one by one. They could barely hit and could barely hit a barn door with their lunches. This time, they were more organized. One snuck up on my, up on me while the others were keeping me busy. That doesn't mean much. It could be it could be you just weren't paying attention. Snow glares at you. I mean, maybe. Either way, I need you to go into the forest and look around. The timing is just too perfect to be a coincidence. Weird monster shows up one night. The slimes get more dangerous. See if there's anything that could be causing the monsters to act differently. Come back from it with your findings, there'll be a few pieces of coin for you. And I'll give you a free room until you leave. Well, then you have a free room aboard. That's a, that's a an easy outcome then. I can't do the tip things, I need 210. Also, I think I proved the slimes are not dangerous. <laughs> Hi there, what can I do for you? I don't have the money. Blech. I require additional dollary dues. Just as you enter the outside area of the tavern, you bump into someone. Ugh! Sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going. Hmm? 
Oh, hello, stranger. The large black figure turns around. It's a lizard man. He has a large quiver of arrows in his back. Its strap hugs his meaty chest tightly. His eyes hypnotize you in a way you can't keep your eyes away from him. You've never met someone with bright yellow eyes and blue pupils. He cocks his head at you. He's given you an odd look. Did he notice you were staring at him? I... I'm Ivand. Hello, Ivand. I'm Noxus. I've never seen you before, Ivand. Are you a new guest at the tavern? I wouldn't really call it being a, a guest. I'm stuck here until the fog lifts. Do you live here too? Noxus shakes his head. I live my, with my tribe in the swamp area, not too far from here. We've traded with the tavern master ever since the fog came about. Just where are you headed to in such a rush? I don't know. I don't know, it just felt like walking out. It feels like a lot has happened and I'm not sure where to go. Well, I can't have that. Snow will have me skinned if I knew I let one of his guests go out ill-equipped. Noxus waves at you to follow him to a more secluded part of the road. There are monsters rubbing these parts, some of which my kind has never seen, and who knows what else lurks among the fog. You need a way to defeat the monsters. Well, my sword is pretty effective at that so far. You won't be able to fight your way out of everything. There are some monsters that show signs of intelligence like us. They offer an opportunity to try a different tactic. Seduce them. <laughs> what a thing to be explained as a tutorial by a character in the universe. You're serious? Yes. My kind developed the technique to confuse our foes. When they're in a state of lustful bliss, we finish them off. In what way? So, get them horny, then kill them? The alternative is just as effective. Noxus winks at you. Now, watch my demonstration. Wait, <laughs> wait. He takes a few steps away from you and starts with a sensual lick of his bulging right bicep. Your face instantly flushes red. Noxus grins and turns around. He raises his tail and splits his his butt cheeks, giving you a full view of his luscious butthole. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just total lack of ramping up to this. It's just enjoy surprise swamp hole. Puff, your breathing becomes shallow, and you're filled with thoughts of wanting Noxus to grab you and fuck you relentlessly. <laughs> All right. I guess we can be more forward than the hyena character. <laughs> you gulp and feel your left hand twitch as you resist the desire to grab your hardening cock. Nice cock, bro. Noxus moves closer to you. His pecs bounces with every step. You feel him pulling you in by the hip. He caresses the back of your hip all the way back, all the way down to your ass before he grabs your right butt cheek tightly. A gasp escapes your lips. Both of your faces are so close to one another that you can even... You can feel that even if you were to breathe, your lips would touch his. It feels like the world is frozen over as the two of you stand perfectly still, looking at each other. Kiss him. <gasps> you lean forward and plant a deep kiss on Noxus's mouth. Your tongue dances and wraps around each other in a battle of, of, of dominance. His forked tongue pushes yours up into the roof of your mouth and lathers itself along your tongue. Something warm and wet pushes up your loincloth and presses against your erection, snapping out the kiss. You break free and see Noxus standing with his dick poking out of his cloth. I'm so sorry, I... No, it's fine. If you hadn't done it, I probably would. Anyway, that's just one way to seduce your opponent. <laughs> The idea that you needed a demonstration. If you act horny at people, you might seduce them. This is a wild setting immediately. 
You have to find your own way. Let's review the basics. Ah, looks like your way will be uh, clicking the seduce button. The end. Noxus goes through the seduction technique again with you? <laughs> Wait, really? By the end of it, you have created your own lustful dance. I should probably go. My tribe will be worried if, I if I'm gone for too long. If you ever need more training, come by the swamp. Okay, teacher. <laughs> you, la you laugh off the teacher comment, but Noxus seems to enjoy being called that. He waves goodbye and walks away. New skill, fantasize. Fantasize? Not seduce? We just gained the ability to fantasize about Noxus, I guess? I mean, fair, I suppose. Oh, weird door. The bathhouse. But you can't get in. Yet. There's the arrow. It's weirdly hard to find. Oh god, there's a lot of points. Uh, what's this one? You find a p oops. Something about fog. You find a path leading into nothing but fog. You don't know what's inside. Do you want to go forward? Yes. Oh, I'm here now. In the direction Nox has told you to find the lizard tribe. There's a thick, musky scent in the air, like wet grass drying under the warm sun. The sound of crickets singing and frogs croaking fills the air, keeping you company. Explore? Didn't find anything. <laughs> well, didn't find anything. Oh well. There's certainly a an approach here. So it's like a it's like a visual novel RPG hybrid. Doesn't seem like a ton is going on mechanically. Oh, you wanna go forward? We can go further in. As you walk deeper into the forest, the earth beneath your feet feels looser and muddier. You can even spot mangrove trees blending in with the usual timber that you see in the rest of the forest. There is a pungent aroma in the air, like wet grass drying under the sun as you approach your destination. The symphony of buzzing mosquitoes, bassy croaks of frogs, and the rhythmic ringing of other insects you barely recognize fills your ears as you travel deeper. It feels like the fog is blending the two areas together seamlessly. You see a familiar face. Nox is standing in front of what looks like a pathway through the trees. With him is a female lizard clutching the hands of a smaller lizard no taller than Noxus's knees. You overhear their conversation as you approach them. I don't know what else to tell you, Glories. <laughs> I have set out, sent out most of the men to scout every possible area he could be. All we can do is wait. Everywhere but the Bull Tribe. How can you not send anyone out there? He could be dying as we speak. Clarice, calm yourself. There is this is no way to talk in front of your child. The little lizard looks at Nox with both eyes. She doesn't seem to understand what the adults are talking about, but she's worried. I wouldn't have to talk about this if you didn't set if you didn't send him out on a suicide mission. What kind of chief does that? Noxus frowns, effectively silencing the female. She pulls her child along and disappears into the pathway. Noxus then notices your appearance. Ivan, I'm sorry. I didn't notice you were here. It's okay. What was that about? Oh, you saw that. It's complicated. Just as complicated as you secretly being the chief of this tribe? I wasn't purposely keeping that a secret. It just didn't seem important at the time. Chief or not, you look like you could use some help. I do. You may or may not want you may or may not know that there is a bull tribe southeast of the tavern. Our relationship with them has ceased to be friendly. I sent the husband of the female you saw to scout the area, and he hasn't returned. I have the others search everywhere possible, but there has been no leads. Sending anyone else to the Bull Tribe area will also put them at risk of being captured, or worse. That's the last thing I need. But you, 
Me? The Bull Tribe doesn't know your affiliation with us. And they are neutral with the Tavern people. You might be our best choice in trying to find this agent. I'm all for helping, but this sounds like I could be getting involved with your tribe's politics. You know, what you're doing is not for your loyalty to anyone. This is simply someone in need that needs your help. I implore you to reunite this family. Fine. Thank you. When you see him, tell him this phrase. The nimble hen drinks ale under the moonlight. What's it supposed to mean? It means he can trust you. Now, I wish you the best. I expect good news when you're back. Wait, you're not even giving me any clues about what he looks or smells like? How am I supposed to find him? He's a lizard man near a tribe of bulls. I'm sure he will stick out. As for scent, I'm afraid my agent took the precaution of masking his scent before he left. The bulls would easily sniff out our kind anywhere. So, any item of the agent would be of no use for now. You have to find something of, on his person while he's scouting the area. Even I don't know what his scent is like now. We'll save the village tour until you come back with any news of my man. Good luck, Ivan. Damn, I'm just being recruited in real time here, okay. It was to the southeast, I think? So this new spot? You hear a sound of rushing water and head over to the source to investigate. You find yourself standing in front of a dirt road connecting to two sides of a ravine. Cautiously, you approach the path and place a foot on it to be sure it's safe. Whoa! We skip really randomly between photos and sketches. The ground feels very solid against your feet. Your attention is then drawn to what, what's below the ravine. A massive torrent cascades down a river into a large lake in the distance. Across, you see a dense wall of trees still shrouded in fog. However, there is a fork in the road, one leading onto the forest, and the other down towards a shallow close to the lake. The longer you see, you look at the trees, the more you feel your heart getting pulled towards, your, towards the forest. Even the way the fog rolls seems to tempt you to enter the forest. You gulp, but steal your nerves by beating your chest once. Instinct tells you that there's something important to be found in there, if it doesn't kill you. So you walk down the path, but you remain vigilant through the fog for any sign of a threat. Oh, so we're going deeper down now. It is kind of interesting having a map. I normally have opinions about pacing and narrative setup and so on, but it's kind of out the window the moment you're playing more of an RPG. And so there's a bit of that going on where our our navigation and exploration is non-linear, so you kind of just make your most of it. There is also immediately not much of a premise, or not much of a plot, I should say. There's, pl there's a premise in that we're stuck in a forest with, because of some mysterious fog. Then, then they just kind of cut you loose and just kind of start wandering around. The fog here is thick. The forest is dense with foliage you've never seen before. It's eerie how the shadows of the trees can be mistaken for someone standing there watching you. You proceed with caution. There's no telling what you may find here. You explore the foggy forest. The sound of rustling leaves and branches breaking branches breaking tell you you tell you you are not alone. Ah, someone help. Your head turns to the source of the cry. It's coming from somewhere to the left of the path. Without hesitation, you run towards the screaming voice. Help! I can't move! Help! You hack and rip through the branches with your bare hands until you reach a tall tree bearing bright red fruits on its branches. The voice is coming from behind the tree. You rush over to the other side with your sword drawn. It's a bull, He's bru and he has a bruised leg. Two slimes are, are climbing his body as you approach. You swing your blade, careful not to hit the bull, sending both slimes flying to the side. Their gelatinous bodies reform, and one of them lunges at you. 
Wait, when did I get one HP? Oops. The slime overpowers you and spits a powerful jet of acid in your direction. You barely dodge the blast by jumping aside, but that's just what the slimes wanted. They both leap for the bull, and before you can do anything, they transform into spikes and stab into the bull's chest. No! Ah! His guttural screams echo through the forest, the fog-filled forest. Just as quickly as the slimes attacked, they leap out of the breast with one of them... Leap out of his breast with one of them carrying what looks like a beating heart? In its gelatinous form? Jesus Christ, I guess they are dangerous. Why did I have one health? I must have needed to eat or something. Like an invisible hunger mechanic that wasn't as apparent? I definitely wasn't that low before, right? You rush over to the bull. His form is motionless. Blood drips from the massive hole left behind by the slime's attack. Oh! You place your hand over his lifeless eyes and close them. I'm sorry. The noise is coming from over here. You hear the voice of a few people coming over. They're going to think you did it. Wait. Fearing over what they will presume upon finding you with their body, you retreat back into the tavern. When you return to the spot where the bull died previously, you find that his body is no longer there. A mix of relief and regret fills your heart, but you steady your mind to focus on the mission at hand, finding the, finding the lizard spy. Okay. Let's go back to the tavern as I, as I apparently have one health. Which is bad. It got low low. You burst through the tavern doors and rush over to the bar. All eyes fall upon your bizarre movements. But you have no time to think about that. Snow, there's a... There's a... Your breathing is shallow and rapid. A dead bull in the forest. The forest beyond the bridge. Huh. It's weird that the dialogue said that you came here, uh, to, you are treated here, but then you came back. But then when you do come here, you have the dialogue that you seemingly would have had at the time of going here? What? When did you find the body? Just now, he was killed by some slimes. Snow steps out of the bar and pats you on the back as you regain your composure. Tell me what happened. Who is this bull? I... I don't know. He was wearing, I think, a red coat, and he had a long spear with him. Calm down. And you're sure you didn't have a hand in his death? None whatsoever. I just couldn't beat them in time, and they went after him. This will not bode well for the bull tribe. Who knows how the chief will react to this news. I should speak to him, explain what happened. And what? Tell him because you couldn't beat the slimes, one of his men is now dead? You'd be dooming yourself, kid. Just get some rest. I... Alright. Somebody feed me, I'm dying of hunger and or sleep? I don't know which one. I have 48 coin, which is trash. So they just sell jerky, which I also have. Learn seduction skills? Hey, I learned a new move from Noxus to defend against monsters. You gotta see it. <laughs> now, why would I do that? I can't stand fighting. Well, I won't really call it fighting. More, um, seducing them into not fighting you? You seduce the enemy. Now that I have to see. I know a thing or two about mesmerizing people to get out of a sticky situation. Maybe I can give you some tips. Why would you ever need to charm someone out, in tr out, of, out of trouble? It's not always me. When you have hot-headed siblings, and your job is pleasuring other men. Uh? Uh? You gotta be able to defuse fights or someone's coming home with one finger short. Uh, I can pull it off. Just watch. I don't like that you brought up siblings. 
struck a few poses at Wider. He watches intently with a smile on his face. So? I don't know what to say. It was cute. Cute? Were you even watching? Well, it takes more than a bubble butt and some poses to get me excited. Then what do I do? Hmm. Well, try to woo me with words. Here. I'll ask you a few questions. And if you attract me, then you're on the right track to being a master tease. Uh, okay. A quick tip. Ask yourself what the other person wants to hear. And if we were on a date, what kind of present would you bring? Uh... The evil eye of a slayed dragon! Ah... Thanks, I guess. How would you plan a romantic meal with me? You, me, naked and eating ice and eating eating cream and sauce off each other's naked bodies. That's not what the prompt said. My, my, as a waiter, I should be against treating food that way. But the idea is just delicious. Last question. If we spent the night together, what would you do in the morning? Hold you close? I'd hug you. And just hold you close until you wake up. Wider smiles warmly without saying anything. Mmm. You gotta work on it. Really? This is a lot harder than I thought. It's almost like we've never spoken before and I have no idea what you want. Just keep trying. It's part of seducing someone. Trying to think about what they would like. Sometimes you might get it wrong, but that tells you a lot about them too. Literally what is happening, okay. Oop. No topics of chat. And then they're the ones that sells alcohol. Anything new with this guy? I still only have sticks and no other materials to sell. I feel like we need to sleep. Oh wait, how much does sleeping cost? Three hours? Oh. Not that much sleeping. Still have zero experience. But now it's nighttime and spooky and probably really dangerous to go outside. Let's suffer some consequences, y'all. Sent Hinzi to a hidden path. You pursued the scent along the pathway. As you travel along, you can hear sounds from the bull tribe. Even though you merely you are merely traveling outside their walls, their speech is clear as day. The spy might have been using the path to listen in on their conversations without being spotted. You continue ahead until you come upon a particular tree. It looks no different from the others around you. This is where the trail ends. The top is masked with heavy fog, but you sense someone's watching you. Taking a deep breath, you kick the tree as hard as you can. The leaves rustle and you hear something heavy falling. Thump! A slender figure appears in front of you. It's a lizard man, who looks completely different from the other ones. His body smel uh, smells the same as the scent you've been tracking down. He branches a, a sharp blade at your neck. You've come to me through my hidden passageway. Who are you? Wait, I'm Ivan. Chief Noxra sent me to look for you. That's a bold claim. What's your proof? The ten- the, the nimble hen drinks ale under the moonlight. The spy's eye widened upon hearing the phrase. He relaxes his stance and puts his weapon away. No one else knows the code other than Chief Noxus. I just didn't expect him to send a complete outsider after all this time. How did you even make it through the fog? The fog's cleared up a bit around these parts, which is why I'm here, to bring you back. Back? Oh, it's been so long. My wife. My daughter. He puts a hand, a hand to his heart and sighs heavily. 
Lead the way. I must return to the chief with my mission report as well. Right, let's go. You both hurry back to the village, the lizard village via the hidden passageway. Guess I gotta go there manually. It's funny because that's you're talking to him, but it's clearly like an enemy sprite. Is the implication there? Upon reaching the swamp, you spot Noxus, who is waiting at the same wooden path as before. He smiles widely as he sees both of you. You've returned, Chief Noxus. I'm sure it's it's such a relief to see you again, sir. Balton, my loyal warrior. Ha. Huh. Not even an entire village of bulls can take you down. There's too much on the line for me to die so soon, Chief Noxus. Return to your family and rest, Balton. I'll call you in regards to the information you've obtained later. Of course. Thank you, Chief Noxus. And there's something important I must tell you now. Go on. Thane is dead. Noxus' eyes widen, but his stone-cold expression remains. I see. Thank you for telling me. Who's Thane? Your question draws the other two's gaze upon you. He is the son to the bull, chief's tri uh, bull tribe's chief. Noxus looks at the spy. How did the chief take the news? Not well. He flew into a rage, and it took a dozen warriors to pacify him. How did Thane die? I heard something pierced his chest and destroyed his heart. The bulls suspect it was foul play. In other words, they suspect us. Typical. This does not bode well for us, but that will do, Balton. So much for calling for the information later. I need time to ponder this. The lizard spy turns towards you then. Thank you for finding me and bringing me back. Here. This isn't much, but consider it a token of my gra of gratitude for me. He gave me experience. Wait, how does he do that? How does he do that? He bows to the chief and walks into the village. As for you, my friend. Come and take a place. Uh, come, you need a place of rest. He waits for you to step up next to him before walking to, by your side. The wooden platform is just wide enough for both of you. You don't know how glad I am to see you. Both back. Thanks. I'm glad things went smoothly without a hitch. He is speaking in a peculiarly low voice. Good work such as that deserves to be... Rewarded. <laughs> While you're here, you'll have your own hut to live in. Seriously? Isn't that a bit much? I won't always be here. I will sleep soundly knowing that you have somewhere warm to rest around here. Consider it lizard hospitality. Okay. Thanks. Noxus leans in close to your face. I look forward to visiting your little hut one day. Something about the way he whispered those words into your ear sends a tantalizing shiver down your spine. Something about it? This person ne has no concept of what flirting is, which makes sense given the part where they learn seduction as a move and have, then feel like they should just show it to people. Poor clo there's Clueless Wolf. That may be, might be our starting point, our stopping point for today. This has been Tavern of Spear. It is on set to get extremely horny i think but uh yeah it's it is kind of interesting poking around all non-linearly and stuff and, and seeing what to do although this might kind of be the only quest that's going on right now i guess just poking at a map feels like you're up to more i'm curious about the approach they have with the map nodes where you go to a map node and then explore for a bit and then it unlocks a new map node because while it might somewhat immersively set up the idea of like, oh, I'm going deeper into the forest for this particular quest. I feel like that map just might get really cluttered with nodes that seem to not do anything, because they, they, they eventually reach destinations, but the intermediate ones, I don't know why you'd go back to them, but you eventually might just have so many spots on the map, you might get really confused what you're looking at. But anyway, link in the description to check out this game if you want to, if you are an adult. 
And uh, other link is to the playlist for all the other Let's Tries, because I've been doing a lot of these. Thanks for watching, like always, guys, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.